So we have another very good surgeon, and I consider him as a terrific surgeon, actually, and that's none other than Yuri McKee. And he's going to talk to us on one problem which we all face, and that is if you're managing the nucleus when the posterior capsule has ruptured, can we manage it with the IOL scaffold technique? Yuri, all yours. Oh, thank you, Maura, and happy Veterans Day to everyone. Steve Shalhorn, Greg Parkhurst, all the other veterans, I'm sure, they're in the audience. Let's go ahead with the video, please. These are my disclosures. They're not relevant to this case. And so here we're talking about managing the rupture of the posterior capsule with the technique that uh, Amar induced called the IOL scaffold. And these images are uh, complements of Amar. They publish this technique where if you rupture the posterior capsule and have a uh, retained nucleus descending, the first thing you want to do is do a vitrectomy and free the nucleus. And then using a rod uh, or viscoelastic, uh, try to support that nucleus, elevate it into the anterior chamber. And now, so with some more viscoelastic to support it, you can bring the IOL in at this time, inject it into the anterior chamber, catch the leading haptic on the distal iris, and now you have a very stable platform with which to continue phaco emulsification, where vitreous is held posteriorly. Uh, it's also important to notice we left the trailing haptic outside the eye for support, and now you can dial the lens into the sulcus and perhaps do some optic capture. Again, video is courtesy of a Mars group. Here's a posterior polar cath uh, cataract, and some PC rupture. Now, luckily, most of the nucleus is out, but some epinucleus is going to go south on us here. And before you make this situation too bad, let's stop, put infusion into the eye, go through the pars plana, elevate this safely, and put the lens under the cataract fragment, support it on the iris, and now it's much safer to continue the phaco emulsification while keeping vitreous posterior and cataract fragments anterior. And then if you have an intact rexus, you can go ahead and do a sulcus uh, placement uh, and perhaps with optic capture again. You can also remove the residual cortical fragments through the pars plana. A very stable uh, platform with which to work on. Indeed, what you have here is an acrylic posterior capsule. You're not going to break through it with a phaco emulsification probe. Now, perhaps this is just the domain of the experts from a Mars group. You know, I've borrowed all these videos from him. Look at him lifting another nucleus here and levitating it. Uh, using viscoelastic, as David Chang has shown us how to do, and phaco emulsifying on this acrylic posterior capsule. But I'll tell you that it's not just the domain of someone who works for Amar. I've done it as well, and I'm here just as an average Joe surgeon to show you that you can actually do this. And I think the next case will show us that. Uh, so here I am. In this case, this is a total uh, loss of zonules from trauma, and I foolishly tried to phaco the entire nucleus on the anterohyoid face as I'd heard was possible, and you can see I'm just losing the nucleus. But there I'm using viscoelastic to elevate the nucleus back into the anterior chamber, a little vitrectomy uh, cut out for the purposes of time here just to make sure I don't have any traction on the vitreous, and now inject my lens underneath the entire nucleus and capsule complex, hooking the leading haptic on the distal iris, I'm using a second instrument that's a coke spatula to stabilize that platform, and I'm using a fragmatome to remove the lens with a posterior infusion. And as been mentioned already, infusion in the eye in these cases is very important to maintain uh, the structure of the globe. Now, I have no capsule left. So in this case, we've made scleral flaps and tunnels, as Sadir has already shown us, and I'm doing the handshake technique to get the leading haptic into these uh, tan forceps. I will externalize the first haptic, and now I'm going to take the trailing haptic into the eye, once again, a handshake technique and externalize the trailing haptic. I only use a two-side flap, not a three-side flap, and I make the uh, scleral tunnel continuous under the uncut edge of the two-side flap. Now we have a well-centered, very stable lens. Tuck the haptics, close the uh, flaps with fiber and glue. But we're not quite done yet. I've done a lot of manipulation in this eye, and the last thing I want to do is give someone a retinal attachment. That's going to be a very poor refractive outcome for them. And so I've already poured it up. Let's throw the lens on, do a pars plane of vitrectomy, because you came to refractor day today to see an anterior segment surgeon do a pars plane of vitrectomy. And so that's what I'm going to show you right there. I also examine the peripheral retina, make sure there's no holes or tears, and finally close the conjunctiva with the fiber and glue after you've, you've removed the pars plane of vitrectomy ports, and of course throw a suture in there so that you sleep well at night, knowing that that wound's not leaking, especially in a vitrectomized eye. And that's at the end of the case. This guy had traumatic optic neuropathy, so his vision uh, potential was 2040, and that's exactly what he ended up at a week later. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Yuri. Jennifer, 
what are you doing when you have a PC rupture? Because this is one factor which everyone faces, you know, and you have a nucleus piece. So would you use a sheets glide or just extend the incision a little bit? Um, well, it's so funny you asked. I just actually had a recent case of traumatic zonular loss, and I tried to, to FACO it also using the my loop as well, but I ended up having to extend, extend my incision and, and switch to extra capsular technique. But now that I've seen uh, Yuri and Yuri's video, I think it would be a great option to try and um, do the, the scaffold. That would have worked So well. the message basically, ladies and gentlemen, is if you have a hard cataract, you can always also extend the incision, you know, make a scleral tunnel incision, extend the incision and bring it out. Or you could do the scaffold technique. But whatever it is, primarily do what you are comfortable with and which will make the patient see.